Today on Talkant, we're looking at why everyone loves Zin. Um, this is our second brand-centric video after Grand Seiko. And because I love uh, German watchmaking, I thought I'd start with Zin. And yes, it's pronounced Zin and not Sin. Um, so why is it that most collectors only have good things to say about Zin? Um, first, we'll uh, look at an, a bit of an overview uh, of German watchmaking and how it differs versus Swiss watchmaking. And then a very quick history uh, of Zin. And then the top three reasons why I think uh, people love Zin. Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Ben. So first, a few words about German watchmaking and how it differs from Swiss watchmaking. There are actually a lot of German brands in watchmaking, but most of them are not as well known as the Swiss counterparts. Um, why? Because most of them are uh, smaller brands. Um, even the, the most well-known one like Alange Unzen or Glashütte Original, they are still much smaller compared to you know, Rolex or an Omega. Uh, German brands usually have a smaller marketing budgets. Um, they have you know, no brand ambassadors and they do less communication. So here again, there is a parallel with Grand Seiko. You know, less communication doesn't mean it's less good, but it's less well-known. Uh, the second thing to know about German watchmaking is the, you know, the aesthetic. It's a different type of aesthetic sensi sensibility than um, um, Swiss watchmaking. Um, you know, it's less romantic, I would say. The dials of uh, German watch brands are, are, are a little cleaner. Um, if you look at uh, German watchmaking, um, it's, it's the Bauhaus design history, it's a Teutonic type of design, it's more function driven and it's more cold in a way, uh, but it's more clean and more function driven. So for example, if we take an example between uh, Patek Philippe 5270 uh, Perpetual Calendar Chronograph and uh, Alange Unzener Datograph Perpetual, um, both of them basically do the same thing, both of them have salmon dial, uh, both of them are very beautiful in their own way, but very, very different aesthetic. In terms of German brand, we actually have a lot to choose from, uh, starting from you know, entry level like Müller Glashütte or Tutima that use uh, third party movements, but also uh, sometimes manufacture movement in the case of Tutima, uh, but also brands like Damasco and Zinn, obviously, uh, and then Stova and Laco, uh, and then moving to maybe a little higher end like Nomos, uh, and then, you know, higher horology or luxury like Glashütte Original uh, and then Alango Unzener and less well-known brands like Benzinger uh, and then Lang and Hein. We have many to choose from uh, and many to discover in, in German watchmaking. So first, a few words on Zinn company history. Uh, Zinn was started by Mr. Helmut Zinn, who was a World War II uh, uh, pilot himself uh, and then became a flight instructor for blind flight. Started. Uh, and then eventually Zinn uh, became famous for navigational clock uh, and uh, pilot chronograph. Then fast forward to 1994, uh, Zinn company was acquired by Mr. Schmidt, Lothar Schmidt, I think. Please excuse my German, I'm not German, I'm French. Um, and he was an engineer and then he put the emphasis uh, on you know, engineering expertise and then uh, uh, technologies. Um, this is why uh, from that point on, uh, Zinn became uh, more known for the Zinn technology. Uh, then Zinn expanded into other uh, categories uh, besides pilot chronograph, um, also dress watches with a Frankfurt line, but also diving watches, uh, even though Zinn today is most known for its tool watches. Um, and then eventually uh, in 2018, uh, Zinn, the, the founder Helmut Zinn, died at the age of 101. So why is it that everyone seems to have only good things to say about Zinn? Some collectors may not like the aesthetic of a Zinn watch, uh, but everyone is in agreement that those are real, uh, you know, legit tool watches. So uh, let's look at the three reasons. The first reason is that Zinn watches are real tool watches built for a purpose. Um, Zinn watches are built with function before design uh, mindset, and they are no pretend watches. Uh, they are real tool watches that are actually celebrated in each of, of, of their different categories and used by real professionals. Um, for example, the Zinn UX is actually used by the German uh, military special operation forces. Um, and for example, the Zinn um, EZM-12 is used by uh, the German um, air rescue. Um, the EZM-7 uh, is used by the German air brigade. Um, also, they've come, they've come up with the Zinn 3006 that was developed with a moonlight hunting in mind. So I don't know if any real professional uses that watch, but at least, you know, how many brands do you know who will develop a watch for you know, moonlight hunting? 
Um, and then finally, you know, Palot Chronograph, that's what they are famous for. The Zeno 103, obviously, the 903, but also the EZM10, which is TESTA certified uh, for professional aviation in mind. So to round up the first point, Zeno watches are not meant to be fashion watches or luxury watches. They are, uh, you know, function-driven watches that have been developed for a specific purpose. The second reason is build quality, German engineering, and of course, Zeno technologies. Uh, Zin watches are built like a tank. Um, if you look at the diving watches, for example, they are, they are built from U-boat or in German U-boat, uh, submarine steel. Um, and they also have uh, some watches that they did before in limited edition made with Damasco steel. Not Damasco the brand, but the folded steel, the Damasco steel. Uh, and that's very beautiful, uh, but it's more expensive. If we look at their diving watches, for example, it's amazing what they're able to achieve. Uh, the recently released U50, for example, is 11.15 mm thick, uh, but it's 500 meter water resistance. Compare that to a Tudor Pelagos, that's 14.5 uh, mm thick for 500 meter water resistance. Uh, the UX that's used by the German uh, Special Operation Forces is water resistant to 5,000 meters. Um, then there's also the, the movement. So Zin does not uh, make in-house movements. Um, however, uh, they use third-party movements, uh, they used to use ETAs and, and Celitas, but they use top-grade movements uh, and they actually do a lot of work on them in regulations but also modifications. Uh, if you look at their SZ01 movement, the chronograph with the central hand uh, that was uh, uh, based on the 5100, um, this is something that took them, I think, five years to develop and it's as close you will get to an in-house movement from Zinn. So let's look at some of the Zin technology. We're not going to go into details uh, uh, about you know, each one of them because we'll be here for an hour. Uh, but you know, uh, we, we, let's just go through them quickly uh, because I think that's one big reason why people love that stuff. Uh, first, there is the tegimenting, uh, which is basically a hardening of, of the steel. Um, so if you take, for example, a diving watch, uh, a U2, that is made of uh, U-boat uh, submarine steel that's already more corrosion resistant and harder than regular steel, and then you apply tegimenting, uh, it, makes it makes it even harder. Uh, then they have, you know, the, the black coating, uh, the DLC coating that they apply on top of tegimenting. Uh, that makes the watch basically almost as scratch resistant as a ceramic watch. They have other technologies such as, you know, the dipole escapement, the lubricant-free escapement invented, I think, in, in 2001, um, which uses nanotechnology to, I think, apply uh, diamond powder on the pallet forks and the escape wheel. And uh, that will perform, you know, much better over the long term, oil-free. Um, they use, um, you know, hydro technology and they have oil-filled dials, uh, especially on the UX, um, so that the dive watch is readable under any circumstances at any depth. Um, they have, of course, the you know, moisture-free uh, uh, technology uh, with the D3 pushers for the chronograph uh, and then the, the, you know, the, the capsule that they put on the case and also the nitrogen field dial. It used to be argon, now it's nitrogen. Then they also have you know, magnetic field protection, uh, then they have temperature resistance technology, uh, then they have you know, the captive bezel that I think only Breitling also uses. So you know, the list goes on and on. They have so many technologies and I think as collectors, as guys, we love that stuff. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but because I love all those technologies, uh, I go on Zin website and try to find which of their watches actually has the most technologies. Uh, so, um, you know, Comment below if, uh, if you find another one, but the one that I found that has the most technology is actually the EZM10. Uh, the Palot Chronograph, the one that is TESTA certified, has seven Zin technologies in it. Uh, the second one is the Duo Chronograph 756, uh, which has six technologies in it. Uh, and then the third one is the U2 that has five technologies in it. Uh, so those are my, probably my top three favorite Zin watches. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the U2 also has submarine steel. So yeah, five plus submarine steel. And finally, the last reason is that Zinn is an honest brand with a good quality to price ratio. Uh, other brands, for example, uh, I think would probably market those technologies to no end and charge exorbitant amount of money for them. Uh, but Zinn keeps innovating and yet doesn't brag much about it. Uh, another reason I think is that Zinn is very approachable. You can actually customize your Zinn. You're going to have to order it in advance, but they're very willing to accommodate um, customers' preferences and, and, and demands. Uh, also, if you go to Frankfurt, you can actually walk up to their factory and they have a factory store there and they're very welcoming and you can build your watch there. So prices um, have gone up, especially with the popularity of Zinn recently, uh, but they still remain very fair. 
uh, Zen watches on the secondary market uh, maintain pretty good value, especially the ones with tegument, because they look good uh, even after a long period of time. Um, so I think, uh, you know, overall Zen watches are very fair and uh, they are kind of this low profile brand that's known to collectors, you know, in the know, uh, just like Grand Seiko. Uh, so, you know, in the end, what's your favorite Zen? Uh, like I mentioned before, for me, it would probably be the EZM10, uh, you know, the U2 uh, and the Geochronograph 756. But um, all three of them um, have, you know, issues why I, I'm not able to get them. Uh, the EZM10 for me is, is too big. It's a 46 mil watch. I mean, it's huge. It has a 53 lug to lug size. Uh, I just can't wear it. I love it, but I can't wear it. Um, the Geochronograph 756 is quite thick and I know um, you know that shouldn't bother me but at the end of the day it kind of does and uh, I still love it but I'm thinking that it might be just a tiny bit too thick uh, and then the U2 uh, it's kind of like the Easy M10 it's it's a huge watch it's 44 or 45 um, I've tried it many times I want to love it but it's very big and it kind of look ridiculous on my wrist I have a six and a half inch wrist uh, but recently they came up with the you know the U50 uh, 11.15 millimeter thick it's a 41 it's a perfect size uh, diving watch um, yes it doesn't have as many of the zin technologies that i would like it to have uh, but it still has the the submarine steel and i think that actually might be my first zin so which one's your favorite zin are you a zin collector i find that zin is pretty addictive and one, once you get one you might get two and three and you you quickly become a, a zin collector um, which one was your first zin which one is your favorite are you considering Zen? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, let's talk about this. Um, that's about it for me today. Um, if you like this type of content, don't forget to you know, click, like, subscribe, share. Um, and don't forget to always ask yourself what makes you tick. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.